So I was like, if you're not happy, then why are you not happy? And I'm not going to lie, like, I think it was the suit and the cologne that was oh driving her crazy. God. I think it was oh the suit. Lord. That's another exclusive. I think it was the suit that had her going crazy. How long but, have you been wearing suits? Hold on, but I'm, I'm telling my part. Hi, and welcome to And If Love Remains. I am your host, Mike Levitt, and I have two very special guests on. Um, before th I do that, I, I want to mention that that this is the beginning of um, a series that, that And If Love Remains is going to be doing um, called Love Stories. Um, many of you may know that I'm a musician by training, and I've, I've written many songs and, and done wedding songs and, and all kinds of things. And, and I loved hearing people's stories. That's one of the, my favorite parts, hearing how, how they met, how they got together, how they fell in love. How they fell in love after they got married is all, often more exciting than, <laughs> than the before. And, uh, and I, was, I was pumped up because I, I got in touch with uh, Thomas Terrell and his wife, Tijuana. Um, and uh, and they, they host a podcast called The Terrells. And I thought it'd be just a perfect opportunity for us to get to, for me to get to know them and, and maybe get their story out and, and share a little bit about what they're about. So I want to welcome to the show, Thomas and Tijuana Terrell. Thanks for being on. Hey, thanks hey, for having thanks us. For having us. <laughs> it's my pleasure. My pleasure. Be before we get into it, let, let me ask you, I know Thomas, you're a, you're a, um, a comedian by training. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, stand up comedian. Uh, that's fantastic. How did you get into that business? Uh, alcohol. <laughs> 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 it, it, it all started with alcohol and a dare for me to, you know, get up and do an open mic. And then I just, I just like being on the stage. So I just continue, continue with it. And, and uh, a lot of doors has been opening up since I've been doing, I've been doing it about uh, five years this year, make it five years. But I don't know if this year we really going to count this year because... <laughs> yeah, I think this is a ball game. <laughs> <laughs> counts, you're still making people laugh. So. That's true. That's true. <laughs> well, yeah. You don't, you don't, you, as long as you make her laugh, that's all that's important, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she, <laughs> she hard to make laugh. And then she always sits like in the front of the... And I'd be like, why you got to sit up that's front? That's intimidating, bro. <laughs> You know, sitting with the mean face and everybody else laughing, and she's just looking like I heard these jokes <laughs> before. So I gotta stay on top. Of, gotta I gotta stay on top of my game to at least see, crack a smile or something for her. Oh, keep it fresh, Tiana. What about you? What What do you do? Well, actually, um, I'm a singer. Um, I haven't sung in a while. Um, I'm still, you know, on the fence about the singing. Thing. Um, I have sung with other bands. I did, you know, I had a band that I was singing with and things like that. And, um, maybe I'll get into something that involves singing. Maybe not. Maybe yeah. um, I might be called to do something else. But lately I have been into speaking with the youth about um, like mostly like young ladies about uh, fatherless daughters um, of domestic violence. Um, uh, things that's going to help children be, I, I'm mo mostly focused on, um, children and also, um, people that have relationship, um, issues. I have helped a lot of my friends do relationship problems when they wanted to give up on their marriages and things like that. I told them to hang in there yeah. and they didn't enter. And I got the feedback off of that where they told me, thank you for encouraging me to stick in there and instead of telling me to leave. You know, and things like that. So I like to encourage and impact people for the That's most fantastic. part. That's fantastic. That's great. And and I think you guys are doing a great job with your podcast. Again, the name of the podcast is The Terrells. You can look them up at, at, at anywhere you can find podcasts, right? Spotify. Um, yeah, we on Spotify, Apple Music, uh, Google. Not iHeart yet, but we're working on getting on iHeart and Pandora, but like, Breaker, all, all those platforms that I'm still learning about. Right. Uh, and, <laughs> you know, that's that's talking with the Terrells. And, and our podcast is basically, you know, just trying to push love because if you look at the way social media is going, they're pushing singleness and everybody want to, you know, just be out there. But 
we're trying to push togetherness and, you know, basically love and just talk about relationships and being vulnerable because no relationship is perfect. So, you know, everybody think once you get married, uh, things is perfect and willy nilly from there. But no, that's when the work really starts there, you know, so the it's truth. like. They, uh, first they say first come love then marriage but I believe now that love comes after marriage that's just what I believe because you, you gotta stick in there you can't run like you just gotta stick in there and like marriage uh, what we both have realized about marriage is it exposes you as an individual mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying like who you are not the other person but like what you can deal with what you can't deal with so we just trying to you know Push is worth fighting for. If it's worth fighting for to you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then give it your all. No, that's that's wonderful. And I think it's a, it's a worthy cause that you guys are doing. So definitely everybody check out Talking with the Terrells. Um, that, so enough about you. Let's talk about you. Um, <laughs> I want to um, – let's talk a little bit about your relationship and like some of the beginning. I love – I love um, – beginnings like how did things begin and and how did how did all that happen uh, Tiana, let me start with you like what talk to me about your mindset before meeting thomas and or how long did you know him like t- talk about like the before thomas you know there's there's a you uh, bc and, and <laughs> ad you know? <laughs> yeah yeah now yeah. it's you know it's it's uh, before thomas and after thomas so what tell me about your life before that and and were you looking for a life partner what was your mindset? Well, actually, at the time um, when I met him, I was going through a divorce. It wasn't a bad divorce. It was a mutual divorce. I had um, I was with somebody that should have been a friend. But you know how you'd be like, um, oh, we, I think we're cool as friends. So maybe we should just get married. But didn't realize that you have to be attracted and, you know, like, you know, but you can't just have friendship. You got to like them in some type of way in an intimate right. way to you know and we both just agreed that mm, maybe we didn't do the right thing just because we were friends didn't mean that we were supposed to go past that so yeah. um that didn't that that I was going through that and um actually I've always um have known um I call him TJ okay. so I've <laughs> always known TJ he, we lived in the same neighborhood Oh, really? And, um, yes. That's mm-hmm. awesome. We yeah. lived in the same neighborhood, and he would see me all the time when I was come walking from somewhere, and I would see him, and I'd be like, hey, hey, TJ, and kept on walking. <laughs> and it's a co- it was um, one time he did try to talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> and um, did you, did he you said he was trying on? to be my friend, but he was. Tr- I think he was trying to talk to me. Right, so, right, uh, right. I was married at the time, so he came up to me and he asked. He didn't. He wasn't disrespectful. He said he would like to be my friend, and I said, "Well, you know, I'm married, you know." And he was like, "Okay, what does that mean?" I'm basically, I'm just trying to be your friend. I was like, "No, I don't think, you know, that will be cool." So he just walked off, and then after that, um, our neighborhood, the neighborhood we um live in. They would have parties every now and then, and every year they would throw these parties, and TJ would come and dance with me all the time. Nothing disrespectful, no no distasteful dancing or anything. Yeah. And he would dance with me, and then he'll go on about his business. And I never thought anything of it. I never thought, like, um, you know, ooh, I like him and this, that, and the other. So... <laughs> I'm blushing, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we like it here at And of Love Remains. <laughs> so the night that me and him really connected, um, the lady around our way uh, had got married and we were invited to her wedding. And this particular day, I don't know what happened, but this particular day, I was like, wow, TJ, T- I've never thought of him at all. And I said, TJ probably be here. And I always get my dances with him. So we get in the reception and I said, TJ, I'm going to get my dance. He said, yeah, you're going to get your dance. And that was it. So I'm dancing. And as soon as we, I started dancing, he came back up. He came up to the dance floor and he started dancing with me. Um, uh, he started dancing with me and he asked me, was I happy? And I said, I'm happy, but, you know, I could be happier. And he was just like, 
like, why not? Like, why aren't you happier? <laughs> right. And I ain't had no answer. So I was like, I don't know. So <laughs> and we just talked. Now, granted, every time we danced before, we never talked. We just danced and that was it. It just went out. But this particular night, we actually had a conversation. And I can say that Sparks had definitely flew. Yeah, that yeah. Exact same night. And I was scared because I've never experienced that. So I was like, uh oh. I'm liking him and I'm like, this is not supposed to happen because I done seen him a few times. So why hasn't this happened then? Like, what is going on? It's not supposed to happen. <laughs> so I was kind of scared because it caught me off guard and, and I wasn't looking. So I think that's why it scared me because I was like, oh, sure. no. Nah. You know, so wow. that's how um, that's things awesome. started. And All we've right. been inseparable. Yeah, well, I, 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 I got to take a pause here because I, I got to now get the other side of the story. <laughs> 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 and uh, so, yeah, Thomas, T, TJ, if you will, what t- talk to me like what what um, uh, what about you? I mean, obviously, this girl you've been seeing around, I mean, sounds like for a while, growing up in your same neighborhood. I mean, she's a good looking girl. Yeah. What's the uh, tell me your side? Uh, like she said, we, we grew up in the same neighborhood. She, uh, she's actually older than me. She graduated with my sister, but like I told her from day one, I was like, you always been, you know, the girl of my dreams, but she don't believe that. <laughs> Let me make that noted. Uh, but, <laughs> but I was here and she just had a, like, I was going through like a depressed state for a long time, uh, dealing with depression and just unhappy on the inside. And I would see her smile. It, it was nothing much, but it was just like brighten my day up. So that's why she was the woman of my dreams. And we was uh one day we I was sitting with a friend. We were out. They were having a block party, and she was talking to one of the other guys around it. You know, a mutual friend that we had, and she was just laughing. And I was mad. I was like, <laughs> man, why 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 is she laughing with this cornball guy? Like, <laughs> what's what's so funny about him? Like, I want to make her laugh and you know stuff like that. So, uh, like she said, we, we were at the party. Uh, I, like, when it comes to women, like, I had a distasteful taste in my mouth because I never had a good experience, even starting from with my mom. Oh. So, I just looked at women, like, beneath me. I don't want to sound belittling, but I just didn't really care for women. Right. Uh, in a relationship or caring type way. So, uh, but yeah, we, we will always dance and I'm going to make this clear on this podcast. She giving herself too much credit. Because <laughs> I said, I wanted to be her friend. She thought I meant like friend, like but, friend. You know, but yeah, I was just like, you know, cause I liked her smile. Like, and I, I wanted to be are reading that she, Are you saying she was reading into you a little bit more than Yeah, you? but she thought I was trying to be, you yes, know, you Netflix and chill, <laughs> you know, them type friends. So I want to clear that up on this podcast, giving you the exclusive. She giving herself too much much credit but <laughs> um <laughs> but um <laughs> moving forward um That's awesome. <laughs> the, the, the crazy thing is um she the wedding that she speak of she wasn't gonna go to uh she went last minute she decided to go last minute and i wasn't gonna go there because it was the lady who kind of raised me, she had got married, like, and I was like, I don't even know the dude. Like, so why I'm coming to the wedding, you know, like, <laughs> right. I felt kind of, I'm like, I'm not coming. So they kind of held the wedding up. She was like, you're my son. Uh, I can't do, because I was supposed to walk her down the aisle. I was like, just somebody else. Like, I don't even know who you married. Like, so <laughs> neither one of us was going to go. So I was actually about to leave. And she was like, you going to give me my dance? And I was like, well, let me uh. make it work. But I didn't expect the night to turn out the way that I guess my heart was jumping out my mouth. You know, like I was just like really concerned. Like, are you, are you really happy? Like, cause you, everybody in life should be happy right or wrong. Right. Right. So I was like, if you're not happy, then why are you not happy? And I'm not going to lie. Like, I think it was the suit and the cologne that was oh driving her crazy. God. I think it was oh the suit. Lord. That's another exclusive. I think it was the suit that had her going crazy. How long but, have you been wearing suits? Hold on, but I'm, I'm telling my boss. Oh, <laughs> let, me, let me tell her I was. You'll get your so chance I here in a minute. It, I think. I didn't say this was a fact, but I think it was the suit. You know, because she, she told me how good I was looking. She ain't never really. She see me in jeans and stuff, but that suit. 
Man, if you listening, just man, put the nothing like a, a sharp dressed man, eh? Man, a man's suit <laughs> to a woman is like lingerie to to us. So <laughs> right? a nice suit. It, I think it was the suit, but I'm gonna keep going. So <laughs> <laughs> and, and she was like, Wow, you really looking good. And I'm like, I did. All yeah, of a sudden she was I listening did. to all that you said. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, maybe it was the words, but I think it was the suit. <laughs> but I'm gonna leave it at that. Uh, but yeah, we. That's danced, gonna be on the gravestone. Uh, it was the suit. <laughs> <laughs> but we we danced all night, and and man, surprisingly, I'm leaving out with my sister, and she finally gave me the number. Oh, let me rewind. We was by a fountain, and you know, like you you know how you live movies through your own head, or you sing a song and you act like you're in a music video. Absolutely. So we we were by this fountain. And I tried to kiss her. And I think she was going to kiss I me was, back. I was going <laughs> to let you. Until, until, until a friend came out there like, hey, what y'all doing? And I was like, oh. <laughs> you know, like not to be ain't disrespectful. Doing yeah, we ain't doing nothing. So we just both like kind of ran off like little kids. <laughs> yeah, I was terrified. But uh, the, but she she gave me the number. I looked up, got the number. And early since she gave me the number, I said, I'm going to make it count. So we started talking. Then we was like, well, we going to hang out. And just things that happened were supposed to happen. Like, far as, like, we went out to a mutual, uh, not mutual, we one of my comedy friends' uh, party, and I just grabbed her hand. Now, mind you, this ain't even my lady You at the time. You get what I'm saying? Right, But right. I'm like, I'm going to make the most out of this. And like I say, my heart's coming out of my mouth. And we just, it just feel like, you ever been on a cyclone at the uh, carnival where you stuck to the wall and it's just going around, but you just can feel yourself? That yep, That's yep. how it felt. Uh, just like a lot of stuff was going on around us, but it felt like nobody was in the room but us. Yep. And since mm-hmm. that day, it's just like, I said, I'm going to make this count. Like, because I looked but at everybody it. Everybody else felt it too. Everybody else seen yeah, it. Yeah, because the lady behind us said, You don't look at me like he looking at her. And I was like, I was like, I don't know how I'm looking at her, but he need to get to looking. <laughs> <laughs> but since that day, every day, and uh, actually, January the 8th will be five years since oh, I've wow. called her every day. Uh, conversation never get old. Yep. Uh, we've been married a year. It's been a long year because we've been stuck in a house. Yeah, that but is I'm, a, I'm, 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 it's I'm, a good ooh. year to get to know each other. Oh, I'm gonna get to that after. <laughs> I'm gonna get to that after a while. But all right, yeah, we've been we've been <laughs> we've been stuck in a house twelve long months. Just just stuck in a house. But uh, actually, we we enjoy each other. We best friends and. I always give her credit because like like I told you, I didn't really care anything for women. So she changed my aspect just on her. No other woman. Just <laughs> I still feel the same way, but I feel like I at least got one good woman out this whole, you know, universe. So you got the one, my man. <laughs> I got the one that count. You get what That's I'm right. saying? Like I don't really yep. need to care about the rest of them, but I got the one that count for me. Uh, you get what I'm saying? All right. So I gotta pause here. T1, I got a question for you. When did you mm-hmm. realize? I mean, I, I love the story and I love the sparks at the <laughs> night. I mean, that's just beautiful. When did you like realize like he was your life partner? Like he was your guy? Like, like at what point you're like, okay, you know what? He may ask me to marry me and I'm going to say, yeah. <laughs> like, what was your. Um, what- it was a few things that I asked, first of all. I was so scared of how everything had transpired that I was, I couldn't go to nobody to talk about it because Mm. I don't think anybody would understand what I was feeling. Right. So the person that I went to was God. There you go. And I asked him, I said, I don't know what this is and uh, I'm scared and I'm terrified, but if this is the man for me, please show me, you know, like, you know, and I never told him that I said this until later on. And as time went on, like, it was his consistency. Like, he never missed a beat. Even if it was, if it, even if it was for five minutes, he always made sure he came and saw me. Even if he said, I got only five minutes to see you. But he was consistent. He was consistent with his phone calls, seeing me. Um, I knew I was in love with him. When I started, I was living all the way out Towson, and I was driving to see him. He in Arizona, so oh well, two hour drive. <laughs> two hour drive. Okay, two hour drive. 
And I wouldn't have done that for anybody else. So it was a lot of things that I was doing that I have never done for anybody else that I was doing for him, that I was doing for him because, and I'm like, I, yeah, I know that I'm in love with this man because there's no way nobody could ever get me to do any of the things that I was doing. Right. So I, I, I knew that. And then his character, I watched how he was with his daughter. Um, you know, I just, by me just spending a lot of time with him, I just, and I said, God, if this is the man for you, you would, you're going to make him, you're going to fix him into the man that you need him to be for me, not what I want him to be, but you're going to, you're going to make him into the man that he, that I, that I need. And, you know, and I just got an answer and he was, and I was like, that is my husband. I knew that. And I told him that I said, I know that you're my husband. Like, I don't, I don't, I'm not going against what God has told me. I already and, and know. That. How, how long into the relationship is this? Like, um, um, it was May. I guess, well, I fell in love very early. So I didn't want my feelings to get me sidetracked to what I should be paying attention to. Yeah. I can, I can honestly say within a year. Okay. I can honestly say as far as me knowing that that's my husband, I can honestly say within a year. Yeah. That's fabulous. All right, Thomas, what about you? When did, when did you realize like, yeah, this is, this is, this is the one, like I, I, you talk about how she's the one that, that kind of softened your heart towards at least her as a woman. (laughs) But what, what, uh, when did you know that? When did you feel that? Like, what was your, your experience? Oh, well, just saying that, her uh patience she had patience with me um that's that's big to me she was supportive um first i ain't gonna lie it was the looks because she fine yeah Yeah. she she fine (laughs) so first it was first it was the looks but you gotta have that i mean that's that's not a small thing (laughs) yeah but um and, and i felt like she she was making me a better person and i think that's what real love does it, it it builds you up instead of tear you down because um she was my outlet to life like i could talk to her about anything so like the friendship was the foundation and not just not just sex you get what i'm saying because yeah. sex kind of confuses a lot of things so i'll find our foundation was true friendship and I always wanted a relationship that i can be with my best friend so like we hang out everywhere i don't feel like I mean, she don't, well, she do get on my nerves and I get on her nerves, but it's not like I have to do anything without family. So now I feel like I have my own family. So now I have a me and a lot of people may think me stand for my everything, but me stand for main excuse. (laughs) (laughs) Like, you know, if you got a girlfriend, (laughs) if you got a girlfriend and be like, Man, I can't come in, boss, because my girlfriend said they be like, "Hey, you better be here five minutes." But if you say my wife said, then they say, "You know what? Take how take how many days you need." You know, so I, you know, you with your friends, you be like, "Man, my girl, she don't want me come out, man." That man, you whip, man. But when you say my wife, they be like, "Man, I understand." You know, I get it. So, I, so I got a man excuse, you know. That's- and you need those excuses from time to time. It's true. <laughs> you need those excuses. It seems like that's the only excuse we can't get as big. Right. So it's like, oh, and I use it too. Like my boys be like, let's hang out. I be like, man, you know the wife. She ain't saying nothing. I be like, you know the wife, man. She don't want me out. <laughs> so I know they be looking at her funny. Yeah. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> yeah. You've been wondering why, huh? <laughs> what? Now, now you have a daughter. Tell me about that, like that relationship. How did how did that kind of work together as you guys grew? My my daughter comes from my previous uh, marriage, and um, like like she say, but my marriage was because I was I was brought up, you know, by older teaching. Like if you get somebody pregnant, then you got to marry them type thing. But yeah. that that was the only reason, you know, what I'm saying for birth. So that didn't work. So I ended up um, basically, you know, raising my daughter. Um, I guess for the most part, I had her for the most part, yeah. all the time. Yeah. You know, so um, I was And what like, did she well, think about you, you know, hanging out with this Tijuana? And uh, 
all what I did was the first us meeting. Uh, I didn't let her meet my daughter yeah. because I wanted to make sure that we, I don't, I don't play house or like, I got to set example for my daughter. Like, so I don't just have a whole bunch of women around my daughter. So I just wanted to make sure our foundation was tight. And then I let them kind of build their relationship on their own. I didn't want to make it feel like forced. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, and they have a great relationship. Um, Sometimes I get a little jealous because she call her, (laughs) (laughs) you know, she call in the room and talk to her, you know, and I'm like, well, why you ain't calling me? But, you know, I get it. Sometimes a girl needs a girl, you know? Yeah, I'm like, well, why, you know, I'm your dad, you know, uh, but, but yeah, uh, it's, it's a great relationship. Like I say, most of the time we do everything as a family. And that's one of the reasons why I kind of, uh, cause I started out doing raunchy comedy and, um, you know, and my style of comedy was like, I couldn't take my daughter to a show. Yeah. So now I get to take my family cause I do clean comedy. I do churches. I still do comedy clubs, but I do, you know, churches and stuff like that where my family can be part of it with me. Oh, and I make them part of the show. Like my daughter now. She opens up for me sometimes. She does comedy too. She just oh, turned ten great. on the twenty eighth. Well, what was that Monday? Yeah. Oh, oh yesterday. Wow. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. So happy birthday. She, yeah. <laughs> so she just turned uh ten, but we have a, we have a lovely uh family um, and th- things just fall fall away that they should have failed. Like nothing feels forced. But I want to go back, you know, because right, I'm yeah, giving please. you the exclusive. Yes, I I'm need giving the exclusive. You this <laughs> I want to go back on something that my wife said, so I just let her talk. But I, I, I want to go back on something <laughs> yeah. she said. I knew there was something she, coming. Yeah, so you, I, I want clear. Oh, no. You getting the exclusive? Okay. <laughs> so she did pray. She did pray oh, yeah. that I was the right one. Yeah. But you know how God tell you something, but you don't oh, want to yeah. listen to it. <laughs> I do. So I've she been was, there. She was like, "No, nah, this is too good to be true." Uh-uh. Hey, God, just send me a sign. I ain't never get a sign. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. This, this, this can't be right. And I'm like, well, you praying to God who you believe in. Or, Hold you know, did you just say it's too good to be true? <laughs> yeah, because when you've when you been through certain things in life and yeah. something good happened to you, you feel like that you don't deserve it. I'm, I'm the same way, too. I, cause I am, too. Time, I'm with you. That's awesome. For a long time, we've, I'm going to be honest, like, we gave each other the side eye, like, yeah, you trying to use me. What you what you up to? You too nice. You get what I'm saying? After <laughs> yep. you've been through so much trials and tribulation. Right, I call so it the mini shaft like, syndrome, you know? Where, mm-hmm. Yeah, we're always that was, looking that was, how, where the next shoe's gonna drop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you you just looking for the disappointment in a person. Even though they doing everything right, you like, nah, any day now. And, yep. and that was that was kind of tearing our relationship up. So mm-hmm. uh more than praying, we went to counseling. Yeah. And uh got some tools that help us out. This after marriage, of course. That's why I say uh love comes after, after marriage, marriage because we just feel that it's worth fighting for. Even though we only been married a year, but we just feel like, hey, we all in. You get what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, no, and there's something to that. Like if you're you know, if you got s- small little dragons, if you got small little things you gotta take care of, you know, you if yeah. you don't do it, you know, those turn big pretty darn yeah. quick. That's absolutely right. And most people don't go to counseling until the damage is already done. It's yeah. unrepairable. You're supposed to go there before the damage is done. It's not, you don't supposed to go when it's, when it's damaged. You yeah. go there before. Yeah. So we just chose to be, uh, like I said, it was no major, no proactive. major. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Proactive, proactive instead of reactive. Yeah. yeah. What? So let me ask you guys then, then um, before, let's say even, I don't know, before you got married, before you proposed, like what were some of the struggles that you guys had to, had to fight through? What were some of the things that you, um, you know, what, what, cause sometimes I find like it's those struggles that bring a couple together. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm so curious, like what, if you don't mind sharing, what were some of those things and, and how did it bring you closer? Well, I'll speak first. Um, you, you've been speaking first, but it's okay. Go ahead. Okay. Well. <laughs> Hey, we 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 giving it to you all here. This, no, this I love it. it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, would you like to speak? No, go. Oh, okay, all right. I was just being considerate. <laughs> See that that was my flaw right there. See, I wasn't considerate at first. That's right. Like I would do things. 
I would do things like I'll, I'll give it. We're going to give it to you raw. Like, so social media, uh, she's not on social media. I am. So like I commented under a few people pictures and I didn't see nothing wrong with it because my intention wasn't to do nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like to have, right. uh, have sex with anybody. I don't know if this PG 13, but I'll just leave it at that word. Yeah, that's fine. But, but I was just like, I'm not trying to have sex or trying to get with nobody, but I wasn't being considerate, like, because I never been considerate for nobody. Cause like I told you, I didn't really care for females, but when she broke down how it had hurt her, it hurt me. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So just building that trust back up was even though I was, um, I didn't have no intentions, no ill intentions on it, but it still hurt her at the end of the day. It still affected her. Right. So we, I had to uh, build that trust back up. And like to this day, like, because we all as people battle with some insecurity. So when it come up, I'm like, don't question it. Like, just ask me like, so we can talk about communicate about it. If you don't understand it's because the situation happened not too long ago and she didn't understand why this was happening but when i broke it down to her and we just had the conversation about it everything communication is the easiest thing to do but the hardest thing to do ain't that the truth yeah so um yeah so like i had broke her broke her trust and hurt her because i wasn't being considerate but i'm looking at like i ain't out here sleeping with nobody so that's the way that i was looking at it from a man perspective yeah but um yeah, so that that was a flaw, but like even through that, like we we worked through that. You get what I'm saying? Like, and she was patient enough with me to see where I was coming from. Cause some people don't even want to see where you're coming from. So I I appreciated that. That's that's great. What about you, Tijuana? What was your perspective on like? Well, I know that one of our my struggles was um was the like you said the didn't believe that it was true but i also suffer from anxiety mm -hmm. so fear was my thing um i suffered with anxiety and i, I would it, it goes back to him not being considerate so i would explain to him that i have anxiety and sometimes i can um worry or when that time comes when i'm having those feels i can sometimes be a little um standoffish um moody and things like that and i would try to tell him how to deal with me because i've been to counseling for my problem so i wanted to share that with him so i can tell him look this is why i'm acting like this this is what is wrong with me and this is what i need you to do when this time happens and this that and the other but the, sh the problem was is that I wasn't hiding it from him. It's just that he didn't believe that that's mm. what, what it was. Right. So it took, um, it took time for him to um, basically go to counseling and for us to, for him to understand that that like, Oh, well, yeah, I guess, I guess she isn't lying. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. This is a real thing. So it was more so of my um, mental, my mental well, illness. It sounds like it's him. Like, uh, you know, figuring out like how to trust women in a way, like it, like right. I, mean, I don't want to put mm -hmm. words in your mouth, Thomas, but it, but it sounds like you yeah, know, that mistrust was so deep. It was like yeah, uh, how yeah, to break through there. It was really bad, yeah, and it wasn't too bad because, like I said, even though he was scared, he was still consistent. You know, most people if they scared, they're gonna push you all the way away. Yeah, so it was more so like he wanted me, but. He did want me, but he was still consistent. I don't know how he was able to do that, <laughs> but he was still oh, calling it's... every day. He was still taking me out all the time. He was still, you know, I guess he was just, even though he was doing that, he was still like, okay, and I'm going to still watch her while she, well, I think... and I was doing the same thing, but I done healed from a lot of stuff way yeah. before him. So I was understanding of him. So, cause I was in his shoes before. So, I didn't hold it against him, but it started damaging me. Then that's when I was like, I don't think I want to deal with this because now I'm showing you that I'm here for you. I love you and I'm being patient with you, but I can't allow you to hurt me and damage me. Right. 
also, well, so. I think I think people all have like, and, and we've talked about this in, in my family, you know, love languages, like everybody talks differently. Yeah. Everybody expects so. So like when a guy, for example, and this is total generalization, but you know, if I'm just talking to Thomas guy to guy, like we're going to be a little bit rougher with each other. We're going to be a little bit more like we're not going to take things personal. And, and, and like with my wife and with, you know, that, that's something that I have, I had to learn like, you know, I can't do the same things that, that I would say to, you know, my, my boys even, you know, I, I don't know if that's how you felt, Thomas, but. Gotta be a little gentle. Yeah, uh, gotta be gentle. And, and I, I, you know, I got, I'm saying this whole interview, I'm giving you this clue, so I'm giving you <laughs> everything. <laughs> because because I, I really like this, this series that you're putting on. So we, we, we got to start it off with a bang. Absolutely. So uh, <laughs> huh, where do I start? I almost, almost lost her for one simple thing that I didn't realize about women. And, and she taught me about women. And, and that's that they all are uh, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> they all crazy. She said, you know, we we, we was arguing because I said, you know what? I'm not putting up with no unnecessary arguing. Like, it's not no major issue. So it's no reason. I felt no reason for us to be going back and forth over nothing. And she said, you know what? You can leave me and another woman use you up. You know, she was trying to <laughs> gut punch me. I'm be honest. She said, but I'm going to tell you something. We all crazy. And I sat there and thought about that thing. I said, you know what? No matter what race you is, all of them. So it's just what you're going to deal with, what that's you're willing to deal with. So uh, her crazy kind of matches my crazy. I guess that's our love language. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that's a fact. That is I love language. I actually reread the book, and that's a pretty good book. And yeah, we so really use that. And actually, we got the same love languages, and so it comes easy. So it's no surprise oh, that's good. that. We had the exact same love languages. Well, so I w I'm going to push this forward a little bit. And, you know, proposals are fun and, and marriages are fun and everything. But, but let's talk about, like, the after marriage. Like, you're married. You're putting this family together. Like, it's you two. Obviously, you've got your daughter, Thomas. But, but uh -huh. bottom line, bottom line is, about, is about you guys putting, putting it together. Talk to me about that and, when, and how did you really fall in love? Uh, this this may sound crazy about the marriage thing, but we felt like we was married before we were legally married. Mm -hmm. As far as like we were working yeah. through issues that married people were through because we both wanted. Like, and if you both, that's the thing, like you both got to want it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, and I believe that people, I'm not going to say fall in and out of love, but you got to have a balance towards each other because one person may not be feeling it the other day. So the other person right. there to grab that person up and like, it's just a balance. Cause there, and I, what I've realized is everybody not going to feel it all the time. I'm not talking about love. I'm just saying like, want to be bothered or want to be this. So I had to right. understand what our uh, space is. And uh, like I said, we, we both was married before. I like to say we both had weddings, but this is the first marriage I've been in. Cause I'm, working through it. Oh, that's you know, beautiful. Emerge. I love that. <laughs> a marriage is uh, totally different from just having a wedding. Right. But, um, yeah, it, it just take work uh, before, after, and all throughout it, and we just willing to work through it. And we so, recently went to counseling for communication to tighten up on the communication, so we constantly, constantly work at it. Like, um, even if, like, we figure, like, we do things like what is it that bothers you and what can I do to help? And I think by us being married this year is teaching us to help one another. I think we're helping each other more, meaning that how can I help you right now? Whatever right. it is, if you're feeling sad, what is it that I can do to make you feel better? Or if you're not, um, if you're not just stop looking at each other as the enemy and, and look at each other as what teammates. Yeah. As teammates we were, but it was still, I'm going to just say a little teeny bit of side. Eye. Yeah. But n now we're at a place to where we're helping one another, like uh, get through those tough spots. Like he said, like if one of us is down, instead of getting mad and taking it personal, like, is you okay today? Is it anything I can do? So it's more so now that we're married, we love up on each other and we're understanding that it's going to be some highs and lows and really accepting that and 
you know, like I said, life is hard already. And as long I feel that as long as we're not adding any unnecessary um, drama to our own lives, it's fine. Whatever life throws at us, we should be able to get through that. But I don't want to. I want. I don't want to be a want to be a conquering us and conquering the world. You get right, what I'm saying? Right. So, you know. So I'm very respectful and I'm mindful of the things that I do because they affect him. You know, I'm mindful of everything that I do. I have him in mind, and I I feel that if more people would do that, consider the other person, whatever whatever decision they make, a lot of things, unnecessary things, will not um, happen. Just ask yourself: Would you want your partner to do this, or what would you want your partner to do for you? That's wisdom there. That's good stuff. What about you, Thomas? I mean, you guys have been together for twelve months, and kind of the rockiest twelve months, and yeah, it was rocky. Century. So talk, talk to me about that experience. It, it's just we've been in the house, you know, uh, it's been just a lot of people in the house due to COVID. Oh my God. It's been me, my daughter, my wife, and all the personalities. All <laughs> of them showed up. I, I didn't know it was so many. I was like, hold on, some of y'all are too many people in this house. It's always supposed to be 10 people. It's 20 people in here. <laughs> uh, but no, the... The thing that I realized about merge is um, I think that people, when you realize that merge is not even about the couple, it's about you representing God's love. Mm. You're a representation of God's love when you marry because you're supposed to love each other like Christ loved the church. So that means that even through your imperfection, you're supposed to love your mate and love on them and build on them. So I think if more people keep that in mind and stop thinking that it's about them and that they have real responsibility to the world that, you know, merge or work, merge is cool. And plus they got, it. yeah, they got new diseases out coming out with the COVID. So <laughs> yeah, it's it, it better, better save this. <laughs> Sorry. Like, you know. <laughs> so get, get, get comfy, you know, be, love the one you're with, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Yes. And like the and one like, and with, like yeah. and like the one you're with. That's probably more important because yes. the divorce rate will be halved in this COVID. Oh, is I'm all telling over. you, it's already half. I'm telling you, it's it is it is remarkable. I think it's admirable what you guys are doing. Um, I love your show. This is uh, Thomas and uh, Tijuana Terrell talking with the Terrells. There is their podcast. Um, you can also find. Um, Thomas, you know, when things open up, hopefully we'll find you at a comedy club or a church doing comedy in, in D.C. here. Um, D.C., Vegas. Oh, I, I'm missing the stage, man. I'm missing, I know it's missing me, too. Oh, you got, you got to come to Phoenix, my man. Got to come to Phoenix. Oh, he'll get there. Oh, I'll, I'll get there. Oh, all right. Well, well, you got to put. You got a place to stay when you do, man. You just. Hey, I, I'm gonna be the one at the airport with the suit on. <laughs> I know. Where, I know where. Probably the only one in Phoenix. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I want to thank you guys for being on the show. I really, th I could not ask for a better opening act, if you will. I, you. I mean, this is actually the, the main course here. I, I love it. Thank you for being on, guys. Um, any parting words before, before I let you go? Oh, uh, well, always follow us on Talking with the Terrells. I got to plug that in again. But, uh, just thank you for having us, letting us share our story, share our vulnerability. Hopefully it can help some listeners. You know what I'm saying? Like, and just know that even if you're not married, relationships should be fun and it should be about building each other up, not tearing each other down. Right. Amen. Yeah. Oh, okay. all right. So she let me have the last word. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, this is And If Love Remains.